Mm -hmm. So if you stay close to your tower and you can kite away a little bit, that means you're forcing your tower dive, which depending on how far ahead red team are. Oh, we are in game. Wow. Okay. So, wow. Well, we were stuck on the loading screen. Uh, we have now jumped into the uh, into Summoner's Rift, and it's uh, we're already just about seven minutes in. We've had three kills. So, yeah. Wow. Very sorry for that. Uh, we actually didn't see any of it. Um, and so, but we are going to be getting on into the game right now. There we are. So we hey, can everyone. bring you the action. Uh, Bam. Apologies for that uh, the delay there, but we are in and we are now finally underway. We get the uh, the champions organized a bit for you on the uh, on the scoreboard there. You can see in the bot lane thus far, nothing really has happened. It's just been Ooh. a lot of farming, Ooh, yeah, but it is uh, McDicken is going to be currently having the advantage. Oh, but up in the top oh, lane, oh, a big tower that. dive. And that's going to be Vi, that early game oh. Vi damage, picking up the kill and just barely able to get out from underneath the turret. Let's just click under. There we go. Yeah, that was a very, very close one. Vi almost got taken out by that last tower shot, fortunately for her. That was just an unfortunate um, ult from Hecarim, being unable to ult. The fact that he didn't ult before getting ulted by Vi. Got that third kill for, uh, for A team right there. Ooh, attack. Oh, getting in. He actually gets a knock up on McDickin. Taking a lot of damage. Actually not running away. Deciding to do a point blank ult. Though Orphan does get taken very low and actually gets taken out. So even though Attack on Teddy doesn't engage. And is Attack on Teddy even going to fall? He doesn't have his ult yet. So there he goes. Double kill for an Ezreal. While wow, we see Vi taking the blue. Almost as uh, almost as exciting right there. Let's move that chat out of the way. Yeah, so we do? five yeah. to one, but here comes uh, a couple members of the f team Frostfire, <laughs> and uh, he's McDickin, he's just gonna be stuck, getting Ooh. taken down, and a nice pickup by myself, uh, able to clean up the Sona. So a couple of kills answered here by Team Frostfire, uh, able to at least even it up a little bit. But despite the fact that the kills are close, look at the gold difference between yeah. these two teams early on. Mm -hmm. A lot of that, I think, comes from the CS advantage that's in both top lane and the bottom mm -hmm. lane. We see a... Yeah, over, big leads in both. Yeah, 20-plus CS leads in both those lanes. And, in fact, the only the only uh, roles that have let that on, what is it, Team Frostfire, that are winning, it's tied in the mid lane. And then there's Alistair with more CS, but I I'm pretty sure that's that, going to balance out. That's going to be largely because of the uh, the shield. As there, ooh, that's a uh, <laughs> that's a siren going by, unfortunately. But hey, uh, you know that's what happens when you're in the city. But down in the bot lane, McDickin on this Ezreal has built himself up about a 15 CS lead over uh, over Orpmai on this Sivir, and you kind of expect that. Again, McDickin is the top player on the team, but here comes the there engage, and that's going to be a nice ultimate from Sona, and it will allow uh, Vi to come in and help to secure another kill for yeah. McDickin. But in the mid lane, it is going to be Ari getting taken down extremely low into the turret. There's the dive, and it's going to be enough. The, uh, Ignite is ticking down, but doesn't quite pick up this <laughs> myself. But myself just walks right into yeah. the fist of Vi. Yeah, she, uh, I feel like she should have known Vi was there since Vi had just came the bot lane. And this is going to enable a team to take the first dragon. Which is a cloud trick, which a lot of people aren't, aren't like. I, I, I feel like I'm a bit more empathetic toward it than the majority of the community. But I do admit that have, being the first dragon is probably the best time you want to take Cloud Drake. So mm -hmm. you can roam on the map with him, uh, even better. This is going to allow Vi and Ari uh, for a team to roam around and get picks even faster. Because they're going to be there even faster. Even if, say, even say Hecarim or LeBlanc want to follow they're going to be just slightly behind and those few seconds if if done well are going to mean a lot more yeah absolutely and you can again i i wanted to watch i thought the mid lane was going to be the matchup to watch but it looks like there's going to be just so much focus on this bot lane mcdickin just... is just giving them a mcdickin right now because that is some serious um, is punishment the ultimate coming out oh. not quite securing the kill orp my actually uh because orp my took the brunt of that 
was really the reason why it didn't have enough damage to take out attack on Kitty is uh, a little bit strange going on yeah. up in the top lane. The top Not, lane. That was a very strange ultimate coming out of Olaf. Yeah, Volibear just has so much pressure that it just it it pushes it pushes uh what is this? Buttons are happening. It's pushing <laughs> Olaf to just burn his ult when Volibear just walks at him or even looks at him. It's that much pressure, which I don't know, a two to one scoreline. I don't I don't know if it's really that much. Oh, here we go. Spectre is messing up. We do have Vi up here in the top lane. Looks like she is planning. Nope, nope. She's. I think she's just gonna do some counter jungler right now, especially now that they know that Hecarim is doing the same mm -hmm. to their red side to to 18's red side jungle. But actually, Hecarim is rotating all the way down. Good thing, Trifor. He's just gonna run through a vision ward. Yeah, you can see the ping see. So coming they, out. They know yeah. that he's there, but are they just too far forward? That's going to be a ton of damage going down onto Sona, using that ultimate to delay the engage. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, that is Volibear going deep under the turret. With the help of Vi, they uh, will get the kill, get... but the turret is the ignite going to do enough? It will nope. not. Volibear is going to live a great job by A team uh, on both sides of the map, uh, only losing one off of what should have been a great engage in the bottom lane. That was a beautiful ultimate coming out of Mikey Chan to stop that engagement and allow McDicken to get out alive. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Hecker had a really good ult to get right behind her right when uh, she ulted. Sona, I mean. So I feel like it could have been a lot better. Or my... Ooh, about to get taken oh, out. Oh, the ultimate ooh, not quite on target. Engage, but doesn't matter. There's nowhere. There's no way for Sivir to run. And now they attack on Titty. Even though ulted up, getting some nice damage resistant, there's still a lot of damage coming to these people. He does, he is able to get back to his tower in time, though. Yeah, that was actually a really smart play. I, I thought that ult was actually thrown in a really bad spot initially by the Ezreal, but it ended up actually being really smart because it just got a little bit of extra damage onto uh, the onto the Alistair while he knew he could secure the kill. Meanwhile, here in the mid lane, that's going to be Ari in a lot of trouble. Grandmom going on a rampage, and this is really turning into a, a tale of two diamonds. Yeah. It's the uh, McDickin versus Grandmom show, very much so. <laughs> Where you see a 5-1 to one score line, all but one of the kills onto Frostfire is on this one Hecarim. Yeah, so it's uh, definitely going to be you know which one of these two is going to be able to carry harder mm -hmm. is what it's looking like but mcdicken has a bit more help vi sitting at 202 mm -hmm. volibear at 301 and again having a 20 cs lead uh, he's going to have a lot more help mikey chan actually getting a lot of damage in this support fight but it's less of a fight and, a and more just volibear, attack on Tiddy, running away and it's just not going to be able to escape that one grandmom thinking about coming in to join in over the wall but just uh opting not to uh, definitely this wiser decision there yeah and it looks like they're gonna leave the camp oh okay the camp actually does fall i don't know if that was on purpose i feel like they were trying to leave the camp to not respawn which i don't disagree with that decision i like knowing when the camp's gonna respawn mm -hmm. yourself so you can counter jungle it again yeah I definitely it's, agree with that one it, it's ever since the timers were put in the client i feel like a lot it's a lot of it has shifted away from leaving the camps up uh, so yeah. we are going to be seeing a, a good push coming in from the top lane, but oldest question backing out. Uh, he's just backing Volibear way too coming, close though. Uh, oh. He's going to be okay. Volibear wants to go and to clear out those minions. Yeah. So it's Ooh. not that bad, but Ari once again, going to be getting caught a little by grandmom, but not enough for a kill. Yeah. Ulted way just in time to dodge the chains coming up from the block. Do you see or if my hair dump? Ooh, double pick on the grandma. He's ulting away, but once again, Vizel is already on him gets taken out. We do see myself trying to pick up a second and does pick up the Ari for a trade kill. But we do see a 1v1 down here. McDickens is way too ahead though. There's a lot more DPS coming out. And another death from myself getting taken out. Attack on Teddy is probably going to fall as well. Even I though... I they so have ooh. enough with that ult ticking. Yep. Yeah. Sona was, Sona was actually Oom and that knock up gave him enough time to get to, back to his tower. Yeah, so a lot of ults used across the board. But again... The advantages, you have to say, are still just slightly going in favor of a well, team. Not slightly. Uh, that was that was what a two for one in the mid lane, and then a one for zero in the bot lane. Both going on the side of a team. There is a a six kill differential. But it's been the the kill differential hasn't really 
gotten out of hand. Is no, it's not. But saying. the gold has a lot. Yeah, the gold that's, definitely that's heavily. Ena out that's of enabling favor. the uh, the farm to get out of hand. We saw that we just saw the first tower. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, the second tower of the game dropped bottom lane. Both towers of the drop have been on A team. The first dragon tank has on A team. A team is also going to take their is also taking the rift herald right now. Ooh, ooh, is he going to see? Is he going to stop? Does it stop? Does stop the recall, but, but is he to try and go in this? Does miss his, his, Here comes his the Hecarim as, as well. This could be very dangerous for there Mr. We go. Oh my goodness, he just got deleted by Grandmom. But the Rift Herald did go down. Uh, I didn't see... I believe they gave it to... Uh, no, it's not on the Vi. Uh, was that Sona with it? No, it's on the Volibear. Okay, it is on Volibear. There it is, yep. Uh, so that is Volibear with the Rift Herald buff, but now he's getting caught out a bit. He does have the support of Sona to help save him. But there's a nice charm by Ari, and now the fight is on. Volibear will get blown Ooh. up. So that Rift Herald buff not going to be coming okay. into effect. A nice catch by the red side. Uh, able to pick that one up, and now they're going to go ahead and even up the dragons as they get themselves their own cloud try and contest. Oh, oh, not just not enough time. time. Actually, we're going to take it out. Yeah, okay, there she goes. Uh, <laughs> oh, but here, oh, but then the wow, Vi's going to be by herself. And everyone's super low, but there's enough CC to take her out. That was LeBlanc. way too aggressive coming out of Vi there. Uh, definitely not the best of decisions to go in, after, especially after Ari had already gotten herself out of the fight. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely don't agree with that decision. But, you know, wanted to try and Bait make it. a heroic play. <laughs> uh, knowing that you're on stream, you know, sometimes you just get a little too over-aggressive. In those situations, trying to be a hero, trying to make a name for yourself. Yeah. Anyway, so things have quieted down. As we saw, Dragon has been evened up. Myself can try to put a little more pressure on this mid lane, trying to even up towers. But it's going to... Oh, um, it may just be able to take it if the wave comes, but I don't know if that's going to... No, yeah, Ari's here to clear that out. Steam Roller just pushing top with the Rift Herald buff. Putting a lot of pressure on this one. We do have another gank from Grandma coming mid, and the chains do finally hit Ari. Flashes away, but the chains still land. But the flash does allow them to get far enough under tower to escape that. We're gonna stay back and farm easily. You're probably trying to take out this long, but the long has enough dashes to get away from that guy. Again, with, especially with no flash, only having ghosts and having run, there's no real gap closer. Yeah, Self I, actually posturing, very, trying to. Yeah, the, 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 here's now. the problem right now I have with uh, a team. They had themselves a huge gold lead. They were up by about 7,000 gold. Mm -hmm. That's now been diminished to about four to 5,000. Yes. They're up, and it's it's not even, it's not so much that Frostfire is coming back to the game. It's that A-Team is kind of letting them back in. Yeah. Uh, they've been getting caught in bad situations, taking bad engages. Right now, they're diving underneath this turret. Ooh, this is a good uh, yeah, fight okay, for okay. A-Team. Right they when you say that. They lose the Vi. But they pick up two kills of their own and a that outer tower. turret in the mid lane. That was a nice engage. You got the Wombo Com, we got the Vi jumping in, especially with the Sona old, locking them all up in a straight line. Just so much damage coming from the True Shot Barrage as well from Ezreal along all three stun targets. Yeah. And that's going to be a fourth tower for A team with none for Team Frostfire. And they're, they're not done pushing. They want yeah, to see if they, 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 they can't going. get this fifth. LeBlanc and Hecarim are still down. They get the uh, flip onto attack on Titty, just trying to buy as much Ooh. time as they can. Oh. But now here comes Frostfire. They take out the Sona, but a beautiful oh. charm onto Orpmai. Orpmai could be falling here. He stays just alive for barely now. gets away. Uh, oh boy, this is just so close at the moment. Uh, it looks like they will be able to get oh, out. Volibear awesome. taking down. <laughs> Olaf trying to chase after him, but just doesn't have enough speed to secure that kill. So they, I, when everything was said and done, they only got one kill off yeah. of that, and they lost so much. Yeah. Well, they lost so much oh. even before they came back, and then okay, yeah. Okay, Volibear does fall on the top lane, and it looks like Frostfire are going to get their first kill. Sorry, first tower of the match. But as, yeah, the block completely deleted by Ari, which is interesting if you even look at the scores of the two. To be fair, Ari obviously had the jump on the block. The block didn't know Ari was there. But if you look at the four, uh, the four, yeah, four, four kill four block, one, one kill Ari, even the 111 CS yeah. to 86. Uh, definitely, the advantages seemed to be in LeBlanc's favor. But like I said, just being able to, that 
slight advantage that Ari gets if she's able to land the charm without you realizing that she's wait laying in wait mm -hmm. uh, can be the difference. The other thing I want to point out with the item builds is the Olaf versus Volibear. I mean, Volibear was bullying Olaf extremely well early on, but Olaf has brought it back now. You know, we went for that Black Cleaver and just focusing on damage while Volibear's focusing on tank stats. So yeah. Volibear isn't able to deal with the waves quite as well, and it's allowed Olaf back into this game. Yeah, I think Volibear also has put a lot more emphasis on trying to gank other lanes, mm -hmm. um, which gives Olaf the room to try and form up and try and come back, get a few more items to match up better with Volibear, match up better with the enemy team, because... I think Olaf played the most behind right now. Oh, actually, wow, that's strange. Sivir decided to go for Phantom Dancer second item, which I find a little weird. See, the the big item that sticks out to me as being a bit strange is actually on this Vi. I, I'm just... What? Yeah, that, that's how you build Triforce now. Uh, is it? Why yeah, they took, this, they took the zeal out. I, don't, no I haven't played. I haven't played Vi, so I haven't built the Triforce in a long yeah, time. Yeah, they took. They I, took... I really didn't realize that that was actually part of it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's well, either way, there's a big fight going on. McDicken <laughs> is doing some serious work on the back lines. Olaf is going to get up in his face. He flashes away and is able to secure the kill with the help of his team. That's three for one going over to a team. A great job on that fight. And they're going to get even more turrets off of this. At least one, I would expect them to continue push in and take this bottom inhibitor turret as yeah, well. Yeah, LeBlanc may be able to clear in with Alistair coming up to give some backup from his CC. May be able to stop this, but no, it looks like they're just going to give it up. Yeah, with everyone still being down, it's definitely, it, it would have been a difficult stall, mm -hmm. uh, especially Volibear just tanking up the turret yeah. so that they still had all the minions there as well. Uh, really nice job by a team. So they have an open inhibitor now. Looks like they want to go for this dragon as it is about to respawn. We'll see which... Uh, it's which another cloud drake. It is another so cloud wow, three cloud drakes in a row. Uh, I thought I thought there was uh, wasn't there this whole thing about how that wasn't supposed to happen. No, you don't get more <laughs> you don't get more than three of a single type in a game. But another team fight happening while Frostfire tries to tries to contest this, but everyone's just falling. They do get Volibear, but they're about to lose their third in their Sivir. So once again, that's a three. Sorry, not Sivir, Blanc. Oh, that's well, a there fourth. There we go. There's Sivir. <laughs> a triple kill ahead. for McDickin. Ten, two, and four. Now, Woo! are they going to try and chase down onto this Blanc? I don't think they can. Uh, myself they has probably can underneath the turret and will be able to recall. But look at this bot lane. They decide mm -hmm. instead of going for that dragon, you know, they say, oh, you know what? It's just another cloud dragon. We really yeah. don't care about it. Yeah. Let's just go get an inhibitor instead. And they're pushing the mid lane at the same time. They're going to be able to take another inhib turret. Will they go for the inhib? I think they should. And it looks like they are going to start they working a little on damage, it. but recall, uh, sorry, respawns are about to happen. So they should probably try and run out unless they want another... Uh... Yeah, as McDickin actually took a, a quite a bit of time to rotate over from the bot lane. That's true. I, I think it was that hesitation. Uh, if he had moved over immediately, they likely would have been able to get that mid inhibitor as well. But uh, they well, decided they, to play it safe for now. Yeah, they likely would have gotten it, but then probably dropped a kill or two at the end trying to run out with those respawns coming out when they did. So either way, the fact that they were able to back off is probably like the safest decision. They have a lead. You don't want to give it a little result. They actually have over 10k lead right now, and it's 25 minutes into the game. They're absolutely stopping this. You don't want to give the enemy team any sort of chance. Yeah, obviously they this. don't know how much gold they're ahead by, but they can see. They're up 23-15. Mm -hmm. They have such a big advantage in terms of kills uh, and the turrets, obviously, as well. Only losing one thus far yeah. compared to the seven and an inhibitor that they've managed to take down. So it's everything seems to be going in their favor right now. Yeah. We do see God, Sivir and Olaf. We even saw there that they're so behind. It took them that long. It took them quite a while to take out one super minion. But Hecarim's getting caught out. He's trying to ult over, but it doesn't matter. Ari is there, lying in wait. And now this is going to enable them to take Baron. Yeah, they are going to be going right onto this Baron. Uh, they, with Hecarim out of the picture, I really just don't think that Frostfire are going to be able to try and contest this. E even uh, with Hecarim. 
it would have been hard. With Hecarim, they could have at least tried to get that hero steal with the spike yeah. coming through. But now yeah. attack on Tiddy is going to be taking some oh, huge damage. Oh, Block jumps in and just gets annihilated. Immediate, immediate oh, that charm. Was huge damage coming through. Now Olaf has to pop that Ragnarok to try and get away from the Stone Ultimate. And will Orp might be able to get them out? It doesn't look like it. Blue team is just chasing down so hard. Olaf is going to fall. That is three members that were taken down. Uh, both LeBlanc and Hecram have respawned, but another inhibitor is down, and Baron buff is active. Yeah. This is uh, looking pretty dire for Team Frostfire. Uh, they are going to be uh, losing ah. another kill there. Hecarim going down. And look, the Baron buffed minions are pouring into the base. The Nexus turrets are the target. And there's some good damage being coming out, but it's just too little too late. Yeah. McDickin is dominating as he picks up two more kills. That's an ace going over to a team. And now they will take the second turret. They will take the Nexus. And a team are going to move on and play another game here in the GeForce Weekend Warriors Tournament at EVO Gaming New York. Mm -hmm. Very nice game coming out from A-Team. We, we saw some smooth moves from Frostfire, but overall A-Team seemed to just be in the driver's seat. They won every single lane, or at least they didn't lose a single lane. Like, you could argue that it was, you know, tied mid. Yeah. But A-Team, they were either neutral or ahead, and that enabled their neutral teams to go ahead. Oh. oh, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we so we've just been news. informed that the team names have been reversed yeah, we've been the entire time. <laughs> so we have been... We were I mean, wrong. I mean, the players are, are yeah, right, obviously, yeah, the but the right. team names were reversed. Uh, because our, they flip sides. Our, our, production, our production crew making a mistake on that one for us. But uh, it is Frostfire, Frostfire that, that picked up the victory over A-Team. Uh -huh. So uh, that was that was just a, a a slight mistake there. Apologies to Frostfire, uh, but uh, congratulations to Frostfire as well as they will be moving on and playing in the next game. But again, just they there was a little bit of time early on uh -huh. where it kind of seemed up in the air. But once we got to like the 12, 15 minute mark, it seemed like Frost now Frostfire. That now that we know which team was which, yeah, yeah, Frostfire uh, just sort of took over. And McDickin on that Ezreal, uh, I think yeah. definitely uh, might be drawing some bans if the other teams were watching. Uh, yeah, the minute that Ezreal was just able to cleanly one v one the Sivir in the bot lane, uh, that allowed Sona to just roam mid and use her ultimate to get picks. As you were saying, it's about getting picks, and that's exactly what they did. But like the, the thing, their picks weren't even one-man picks. They got three-man picks, <laughs> yeah. as we saw that mid-tower take happen, because they were just so ahead that they could take as... Their team fights were picks. Yeah, and you know, so... Like, just because, like, how, how quickly they deleted people. Yeah, and so congratulations again to Frostfire. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, as we wait for the next game to get set up... Mm -hmm. Uh, we will be taking a moment to get the teams organized, get everyone on the the proper stations, and uh, as soon as the lobby is up and we're ready to go, we will be back. So until then, stick around. Don't go anywhere. Uh, you do not want to miss the – as obviously, the later we go into this tournament, the better the game should be. Mm -hmm. So this don't go anywhere. We will be right back.